This back area is looking pretty empty over here. So I'm excited to start getting some motors installed. So let's dig into the servo motor drivers and see what we have. Okay, so um, I pulled out uh, all the servo motor drivers and motors here. So let's uh, get them opened up. My autofocus head came with this lead shine motor driver. All right, small little guy. So that'll be for the focusing. And funny enough, I have lead shine motors for the rest of the machine. Right before I was about to start the build, they reached out and asked if I had any projects coming up that perhaps they could sponsor. And I took them up on their offer. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, get to use their product for this machine. So um, they sent me um, actually five drives and motors because I was originally thinking that I was gonna try to incorporate the uh, the fourth axis for the tube cutting on this machine. But uh, as I got deeper into the project, I realized the controller that I wanted to use um, wasn't gonna support that. So I'm gonna hang on to the, the one motor and driver, thinking about possibly trying to make a separate machine just for tube cutting uh, as a later project. So anyways, I have these four here to work with. They sent me the model EL8 RS400F servo drivers. These are going to control the accompanying 400 watt servo motors paired with a 5 to 1 reducer. It would make sense to just use larger motors, but in my case, I went this route because of the limited power supply on my garage circuits. Alright, cool. I could have got EtherCAT versions of the drivers and the controller. I didn't know that at the time, so I requested just um, step pulse. Uh, control drivers so that's what we have and that's what we're going to use and knowing that I got the step pulse uh, version of the controller as well all right and they sent me all the proper cables for hooking these all up to the motors and some cables for doing the configuration of the drives uh, when we get to that stage so let me uh, get the rest of these opened up nice they come with all the components here to build my wire harnesses there's the plugs for wiring and here's one of the cables. Okay, so here's what we have to hook up. We have the driver for the autofocus head. We have Z-axis, X-axis, Y1, and Y2. So let's start by getting these mounted to the back of the machine. I was just looking up how I need to space these out. So uh, I'm going to go draw some lines on my control panel there and see where to mount these. All right, I think I'll put this small one here first. It's gonna line it up on my marks. My mark where the holes are gonna be. All right, let's try that. Lee Chine gave me these battery kits that are gonna be hooked up for the Absolute encoder. So I think I'm gonna install those onto the drivers right now before I install them. Here are the battery kits. Looks like they slide right on in here, like so. Okay, nice. I think we can get these installed on the machine. Okay, nice. My spacing looks good and everything looks vertical. Let's take a look at the motors. Lead Shine sent me these motors for the project. Let's see if you can see the model number. ELM2H, 400 watts. Um, I have three of those, and then I have one that has a brake on it for the Z-axis. So let's get these opened up. All right. Here you can see the brake mechanism on the end. Cool. So we have our Z-axis motor, X, and two for the Y-axis. So let's see if we can start getting these mounted on the machine. Let's start here with the right side Y-axis. First, we need to remove this key from the keyway. I've inserted an M3 screw in here. I think we can just tighten it down and pop it out. All right, I've already loosened up the coupler inside here. I've got some M5 by 16 screws here. I think we'll have the cables face inward this way. Oh, slide right on. All right, cool. That's loosely on there. Let's do another one. Okay, let's get the other side installed. All right, that's loosely on there. Now for the x-axis motor. If I design this right, there should be just enough clearance to, to ride above the top of the drag chain here. 
and looks like there is. I think I'm going to need to loosen that so I can slide the motor in first. Otherwise, there's no way for me to get it in there. All right, so let me do that real quick. All right, there we go. Now we can push it out of the way here. So I probably want my wires, I guess, running up this side so they can go right up into the drag chain there. Now I can get this drag chain. Ooh, that just barely fits under there. That's perfect. Um, I've got that reattached. All that looks really good. X, Y, and Y. All right, now let's uh, get the Z-axis installed on top here. For the Z-axis motor, we're gonna do it a little different. I've got these aluminum spacers and some 90 millimeter M5 screws. So they're gonna go through there, down and attach to the top of the plate that I made. All right, I think we want the cables coming out the back here. Lead Shine sent me all the appropriate cables to hook up these motors to the drivers. So, and also some cables for hooking it up to the PC uh, to do the configuration. So I guess I need to start hooking these up to the motors and running them through the drag chains and back to the drivers. All right, let's start with the power cords. Um, this one must be for the Z axis because it's got six wires, two extra uh, to control the brake. And the rest of these take these four wire, uh, four pin wires. Let's start with the Z axis here. I really like these connectors they have. All right, that was easy. Let's run this back to the driver. All right, we're to the back and just enough length. Um, cool, that should be the longest one we need, so everything else is going to be have a little extra. Okay, let's hook up the encoder cable the same way. All right, let's run it back through the drag chain. Both of those are through. All right, let's do the x-axis. I'm going to start with the encoder wire. Looks like it'll be easier to install from this side. Got the power cable. I've got the X axis wires through and I've got them both labeled here. So now we can do the Y axis. Okay, there's no drag chain for these, so I'll probably just have them enter through what will be the back panel here uh, after we cut it out later. So I'll just have to leave an access hole for the wires to run through here. Let's hook up the Y axis on the right side. Okay, same for this side, no drag chains. I'll just have to leave an access hole here where I run them through the back panel. All the motors are hooked up and wired on the motor end. Now we just need to start uh, hooking them up to the drives. I went ahead and put labels on all of my drives so that there's no confusion later when I'm programming them. And I've also put some labels on my Y motors. The other two are self-explanatory. Connecting all the encoders is easy. Plug right into the CN2 slot, like so. Okay, I just referred to the manual and it looks like we simply plug these in here to the batteries for the absolute encoder. Now to hook up the power to each drive, um, all the wires are clearly labeled PE, U, V, W. And they're just gonna go into these connectors here. And you can use these little tools they come with to open up the terminal while you plug it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect all these now. Like so. We can plug it into the drive. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other three. 
So the motors are totally wired up to the drivers now. With the exception of the Z-axis, I still will need to hook 24 volts up to it for, to uh, release the brake. And I have a, extra wires here that I need to manage still. But yeah, now we just need to wire these up to the controller and wire uh, 240 volts to them. I just want to reiterate, same as last video, I'm still not an electrician, just a hobbyist, and we're dealing with dangerous voltage levels, so please consult a, or hire an electrician to make sure that you're doing your wiring properly and safely. I fashioned this daisy chain uh, to ground all the drives back down to my grounding terminal here. Let's start hooking up some power to these servo drives. I wanted to point out, as you see me hooking up the wire here, you'll notice I haven't added the contactor for overcurrent protection. I reached out to Lead Shine Support and they recommended what product I should be using here. Um, I have them on order, but they're gonna take a while to arrive, so I'm just moving forward with the video series to stay on schedule. We'll revisit this later. All right, let's test it out, see what happens. All right, it powered on, cool. All right, just uh, three more of these, and then the small one hooks up to 24 volts. I decided to go ahead and add one more raceway right under these servo drives here. Help keep this a little more tidy. All right, there we go. That should give me a spot to run some of these power wires up to the servo drives and keep it a little cleaner. I had a little extra length on these wires, so I moved them from here over to here. Now I have some more for this one. Let me get all these wires cleaned up here. Let's have a see if they power on. All right, cool. Now I still just need to wire this one up to 24 volts, it looks like. I've been working on cleaning up the wiring on these servo drives before we start wiring them up to the controller. I still have these two wires coming off the Z-axis motor that's gonna need to go to 24 volts. This is running off 24 volts. Um, so because of both of those, I'm gonna get a, another uh, 10 amp, 24 volt power supply that I'm gonna mount right here to connect both of those two. This other 24 volt power supply came in. So I think it's gotta go right here. It's really the only spot left to put it. Okay, now we need to hook this uh, 24 volt power supply up to the brake release also. We need to start wiring up these servo drives to the controller. Uh, the nice thing is I've only had to supply my own power wires. Everything else has come with either the controller or the motors. So all of the cables came with the controller. Then I have the connectors that came with the motors. So. I've been figuring out uh, how to wire these up. Let's start splicing these together. I've stripped back the wires on this end so uh, I can now uh, go through and ad identify the colors to the pins before we start wiring. mapped out all the colors to the pins. So let me make a little wiring diagram before I start hooking these up. On my computer, I've mapped out all the pin connections and I'm just gonna write them down here on my paper to make it easy. Okay, I've made my cheat sheet to let me get this connector all soldered up. I've also mapped out all the pins I'm gonna be soldering on this connector. That way I can be sure to do the inner rows first while I can access them and work my way out. All of this pin mapping and wiring took several hours of work, so it's a really good reason to go with the EtherCAT version of the drives and controller if you have the option. You could not have to deal with any of this and just plug in an Ethernet cable. I've got the first connector all soldered up, so let's get the uh, case on it and hook it up. I've got my other three 
cable soldered up. So let's get them hooked up to the drives. I've got all the servo drives hooked up to the controller, except for the drive for the uh, autofocus head. I had to set some parameters on the drives, just a few. So let me show you real quick. Parameter one needed to be set to zero for position mode. Parameter five needed to be set to one for the high speed pulse input. Parameter six needed to be set to one to inverse the command pulse polarity. And parameter seven needed to be set to three um, to for the command pulse in, input mode for pulse sequence plus direction symbol. And that was it on this end. Now in the Ray Tools configuration software, um, I've not configured any of the parameters for the distance. I'll have to do that later, but um, for each of the motors, I had to check this box to reverse the encoder direction for the X and Y, and then for the Z, I also had to do it here. That was all I did on the configuration so far. Now, when I start the control software, you can hear the brake release on the Z-axis. Okay, we have movement. Stay tuned, there's gonna be a part two video covering the lead shine motor drivers. In the next video, we're gonna set up the gantry synchronization feature, wire up the contactors for the safe torque off feature, and try tuning the motors with their one-click tuning software. Okay, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much to LeadShine for sponsoring this project. Check out their website at leadshine.com if you want to learn more information about their products. As I mentioned, we're going to be doing a follow-up video where I go into some of the other features of the drives and we're going to do the tuning. Um, but before that, we need to do one other video where uh, I get all the laser head and hoses and wires and everything installed on the gantry so we have all the mass on there before we do the tuning. So anyways, uh, thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making these projects happen. Thank you guys.